All right, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to my contest prep series. Today I'm taking you guys through episode 10 and we are officially below six weeks out. So this week has actually been the start of my new mesocycle. So this is actually my third mesocycle of prep. Pretty crazy to say that. I am pretty far in this prep at this point and we are getting closer and closer to the stage. If you can't tell, I'm in another new location. This is where I'm gonna be recording all the rest of my videos for this contest prep series and probably all my videos for the next year or so because I'm finally in the apartment that I'll be in for the next year. So welcome to the new space. This third mesocycle of prep is actually a little bit different compared to the last two mesocycles of prep. And the main difference between the two is the implementation of intensity techniques like giant sets, super sets, mile reps, all types of intensity techniques we are using in this mesocycle. The reason we are implementing these intensity techniques now during my prep is to increase the amount of stimulus I can get from each set, but decrease the amount of fatigue. Being this deep into prep, you know, I've lost something like 20 pounds or so, which is pretty crazy. I have been in a deficit for a long time and I've been running high volumes for a long time. As you go along in prep, your minimum effective volume continues to rise while your maximum recoverable volume also like rises a little bit but the gap between the minimum effective volume and the maximum recoverable volume actually gets smaller and smaller the longer you go through a fat loss phase. And the same applies during a massing phase, which necessitates the use of maintenance phases as maintenance phases are used to decrease that minimum effective volume so you don't have to train with like a shit ton of volume just in order to get decent gains. But since we are nearing the end of my contest prep phase, we are using super high volumes and super high volumes, of course, drive a lot of fatigue. And instead of just increasing the volumes in comparison to what I did last muscle cycle, including some intensity techniques allows those volumes to get higher, but the fatigue to not amount to as much as it would if we were just adding a bunch of straight sets. Intensity techniques also make training a lot more fun, like doing supersets, doing mile reps, that all makes training a lot more fun and it kind of adds a bit of a novelty factor to training instead of just doing straight set after straight set. Throughout the week, I pretty much use an intensity technique every single time I go and work out. Some days there are more intensity techniques than others, and those are usually the days where I just have less energy. So usually like after my first leg day, I feel pretty destroyed on that pull day, which is right after my leg day. I like to have a bunch of intensity techniques that day which also help to minimize the amount of time that I am at the gym, which is super nice, especially being this far into contest prep. Later this video, when I go through my training for this week, I will explain exactly which intensity techniques I use in that workout, which is gonna be really cool for you guys to see because you'll be able to see exactly how I execute them and how to go about them. As far as nutrition goes for this week, I have really been on track. Now that I'm back at school, it's much, much easier for me to just track all my foods and eat exactly the amount of food that I want to eat. So I've been eating 2,530 calories at 240 grams of protein, 50 grams of fat, and 280 grams of carbohydrate. These macros are of course exactly the same as I've been doing last week and they're exactly the same as what I've been doing for the past like eight or nine weeks or something like that. Someone reached out to me on Instagram this past week and asked me how I'm eating so much food but still losing a bunch of fat. I also don't do any cardio and I just do a step count. So I get at least like 12,000 steps a day. Most of the time I get like 15,000, but I pretty much eat 2,500 calories and I'm losing like a pound and a half to two pounds per week. I think the short answer to this question is just that my metabolism is just very fast. I probably maintain my body weight around like 2,800 to 3,000 calories per day and I just don't really need to go any lower in calories in order to get the amount of body weight loss per week that we want. In that sense, I think I'm definitely genetically blessed, but also coming from a state where like I was really, really skinny when I was a kid, it makes sense that, that my metabolism is very high and I just lose body fat and I lose weight really easily. However, you gotta understand this is exactly the opposite. The grass is always greener on the other side when I'm massing. I need to eat so much food when I'm massing. Like, I think I got up to something like 5,000 calories per day just to gain a half a pound to a pound of body weight per week. So while it's pretty nice for me right now to not have to like do so much to lose body fat and lose body weight, when it comes time to massing, which is actually, you know, the majority of the year, given that muscle gain is a much more difficult process to do, fat loss is a lot easier and it takes a lot less time, I need to work 
quite a bit harder during those massing phases relative to other people that have metabolisms that are a lot slower. My average body weight for this week was about 168 or 169 pounds. I don't know exactly what the average is, but that's pretty much where I've been sitting at. It feels pretty weird to be this light because I've not been this light in about like two years. I have not been anywhere near this lean in my life before. So it makes sense that I'm hitting new lows, but it's just weird to be below 170 pounds. Like I've not been this light in so long. Quite honestly, hunger has not been that bad this past week and fatigue hasn't even been that bad either. Fatigue was only bad like the day after my Wednesday leg day, which I do at Fit City with Sam. And leg days just absolutely destroy me. Like afterwards, all I wanna do is like lay around, do nothing. And the next day I feel like pretty fatigued and just destroyed. No matter how much sleep I get, it's just like the way it is. One interesting thing we did this week was actually a refeed. So I did a refeed on Saturday and this was the first ever refeed that I've ever done in my entire life. The macros of the refeed were 200 grams of protein, 50 grams of fat, and 400 grams of carbohydrate. So I'm bringing my carbohydrates up about 120 grams and then decreasing the protein by about 40 grams. And the way I went about getting those extra carbohydrates for that refeed was by none other than Rice Krispies. I decided I really wanted to have some cereal and I decided to go for a more like low palatability cereal instead of going for something like really sugary because I probably want even more of that. But Rice Krispies were super good and I'm really missing having those. <laughs> but quite honestly, the refeed didn't really make as big of a difference as I expected it to. I kind of expect it to be like super full the next day with like veins everywhere and everything like that. But my body weight only went up like half a pound or so it really wasn't that big of a difference, which probably means that when we actually get closer to show, which is kind of the whole reason that we are doing these refeeds is to see how my body responds to extra carbohydrate. We will probably need to have like multiple days of higher carbohydrate or days where I have, you know, 600 grams of carbs or something like that. So yeah, doing that refeed was super interesting. It was much less eventful than I expected it to be, but it is what it is. Uh, that's just because my metabolism is insane and it will do anything to cause me not to gain weight. <laughs> Well, that's pretty much everything on an overall basis. Everything's been going well this week and it's been really nice to be back at school to be able to like track everything super accurately and really be able to get back on my routine and my schedule. And I'm feeling really good. Without further ado, we're gonna get to the workout portion of this video and I'll catch you guys all later. All right, so I'm showing you guys my first push day of this mesocycle, which was actually the second day, I believe. And I'm just starting off here with a little bit of warming up. This is always what I do for my shoulders before I do a push day, do a pull day. I just don't do it on leg days. I probably should anyways, but it helps me a lot um, as far as my shoulder health goes. And it seemingly helps the shoulder injuries stay away, which is quite nice. Uh, the first exercise I have today is hanging leg raises. This is just my ab exercise. I do this twice a week, uh, usually about like three sets. Towards the end of a mesocycle, I'll get up to like four sets depending on how soreness is feeling. But I do a total of about six to eight sets per week for abs and that allows me to maintain the abs that I have built over the years and make sure that they don't wither away during this prep. Um, so yeah, that's just the first exercise we have here. As I've talked about in past videos, I always do abs or calves at the start of my workouts because otherwise I'd want to like skip that shit and like if I put it at the end of the workout. So that's my mentality about that. Here, the first exercise we have for this push session is a high incline dumbbell press. And here, one modification I have made to my dumbbell pressing in uh, recent months is to actually have my, my arms adducted at about a 45 degree angle instead of abducted all the way out at 90 degrees. And what this does is just puts my shoulder in a better position and feels quite a bit better. I think it also does make the exercise a little bit more front delt dominant, which honestly is something I need. Something that I'll have to focus on in my upcoming mass phase is front delt, chest, and for sure arms. I think arms are probably my most lagging muscle group and are the most obviously lagging compared to the other muscle groups that I have. Uh, but the next exercise we have here is the machine chest fly. This is my favorite way to do chest flies. 
I've never really liked him on a cable machine and especially here at the wreck like oftentimes the cable machine is taken up and I don't want to be that one jackass that takes up both sides of the cable machine forever but this exercise feels really good to me we're wearing some dark sport uh, wolves shirt today absolutely love dark sport probably one of my favorite fitness brands besides um, rascal apparel and flag nor fail those are probably my three favorites but this exercise went really well today i used a weight that was like a little bit heavier than what i started last mesocycle with excuse me but we're just trying to get that uh, slight progression as the mesocycles progress so we're able to maintain the muscle mass that we have um, and you know again not let it let let it wither away that's really why we are having high volumes throughout prep is to make sure that we are able to maintain the lean tissue and on this workout we were going to three reps in reserve so that's about three reps in reserve for me next exercise we have is my first intensity technique of this workout well i only have one so this is just the first and last one but this is a giant set on flat dumbbell press i really like dumbbell press well flat dumbbell press because i'm able to get a super huge range of motion i would honestly consider this to be like close to what it would be with like a cambered bar which would be really cool i've seen people talking about the cambered bar a ton especially over on instagram and in the team forum forum which i am a part of if you guys are not part of the team forum forum i definitely recommend you get to be a part of it, it it's really really cool we got a bunch of uh very smart people in there um dr mike jared feather and charlie young are the ones that manage the page but it's great but during this giant set basically i had a total amount of reps that i was supposed to hit 30 total reps was the goal for today and i basically stop every time i get to three reps in reserve take about a 10 to 15 second rest and then go back into the set the goal with the rest time is to basically give myself enough time in order to get at least five reps on the next set uh, you just don't really want to do like like a rest that's short enough to get only like three reps or something like that because uh, we do know that the 5 to 30 rep range is the most effective when it comes to uh, muscle hypertrophy so it's important to do that and then I think here uh, I'm pretty sure I said like fuck because it was like really hard doing 40 pounds on this like feels makes me feel like a little bitch but like this was a very hard intensity technique and this is actually the first time i've ever done a giant set in my entire life i really haven't done many intensity techniques like i haven't been one to do a bunch of supersets and whatever um in the past which is mostly out of respect for other gym goers i just don't really like when people are keeping up like three machines or something at once and like rotating throughout the machines. I hate when people do that. So that's something that I haven't really done. But of course there are ways that you can do supersets that are less intrusive on other people's space. Um, but the next exercise we have here is the tricep pushdown, the good old classic tricep pushdown. Absolutely love this exercise. I've been doing this exercise for, I don't even know how long. It's one that like rarely gets stale for me. I always get a good stimulus from it and I'm able to get like a really good technique standardization. Just this is an exercise that I think especially when you start using really good technique like what I'm using here with like a standardized range of motion, a controlled eccentric and like a good stretch on the triceps. This is an exercise that you really often cannot go wrong with. So um, yeah, this is a fantastic one. I think I had like three sets on this today and I was in the 10 to 20 rep range. So, yep, that's that exercise. Next up, we have dumbbell laterals. I have talked about this exercise not being one that I've really enjoyed too much. And so basically what I did this muscle cycle was I just decreased the amount of weight that I was using. Last muscle cycle on one of the days, I was doing dumbbell laterals with 20 pounds and just, they weren't feeling good at all. So I dropped it to 15 pounds here and I was doing a slightly higher rep range, which actually works perfect because I am in uh, my next mesocycle cycle of prep and I'm increasing rep ranges a little bit to increase the stimulus to fatigue ratio on pretty much a bunch of different exercises. So that is the goal. And then we have one more side delt exercise for this workout for today, which was the single arm cable side lateral. I did this on the free motion machine. The left or the right arm of this machine is actually broken 
and it's been broken for, I don't know, like the last three months or something like that. For whatever reason, my rec center takes forever to repair shit. So I am still able to use this exercise or use this machine for this single arm cable side lateral. And I also use it for a single arm tricep overhead extension. But this exercise I think is great. And it's one that a lot of people should include in their programs, I think, because it allows you to put your uh, side delt in a position where it is able to be loaded at a stretch. And you can't really load your, tri or load your side delt at a stretch with dumbbell laterals because gravity is just pulling you down, but this is actually pulling across your body, which is continually putting tension on those side delt fibers. So I think it's probably one of the uh, better side delt exercises out there. And it's definitely one that um, you should include in your programming if you don't currently include anything in your programming that actually um, puts a stretch in a lengthened state on your side delts or delts in general. I think it's a great exercise. And next up, we have some posing from Fit City. This is uh, just the posing that Sam and I do before we actually get into our leg workout on Wednesdays. And he's just running me through some poses here. So doing some quarter turns. Quarter turns are something that I really, really like. I like love how they look. It's super cool to see my obliques and abs and shit coming in and serratus on that side. And here, even on the back poses, you can see that my hamstrings are really starting to come in, getting some hamstring separation over on my left leg, which is really cool. And uh, back double. Th this is a pose that I just like ran into too quickly, but um, like I've been figuring out ways to make it look a lot cooler and using more transitions and stuff. I may or may not have a posing song picked out and a posing routine going now too, but that's something that I'm not gonna show in these YouTube videos until show day. So yeah, that'll be really cool. Hamstrings are looking really good on these side turns too, which I'm just super excited for. Getting lean has been a really, really fun process. I've been really enjoying myself. And uh, front last spread is probably also my best pose, but you guys know that. Uh, but that's pretty much all I got for you guys this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will catch you guys for episode 11 next week. And yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. Later.